The age of 5G mobile hotspots is upon us as we get new mobile hotspot product announcements from AT&T and Verizon. Hi, I'm Chris from the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you a kind of a double product announcement on the 5G front from both AT&T and Verizon. Now these carriers have actual practical 5G mobile hotspots that you might want to consider but you might want to hold off on, and we'll explain why. So first off, a little bit of history. Both carriers, both AT&T and Verizon, have had 5G networks for a while now. In AT&T's case, they turned on their first 5G network at the end of 2018, and were able to ship their first mobile hotspot saying, we're the first in the world to have this. And you know, Verizon wasn't too far behind, but these were short range millimeter wave networks, core urban areas only, and these early hotspot devices that they had were basically very limited, only available to select customers, and only would work on this millimeter wave network. So they were not going to be compatible with nationwide 5G. So all that old stuff was really not worth thinking about. Now here, we come into the, the fall of 2020, there's a new modem chipset called the Qualcomm X55 that makes um, next generation mobile hotspots devices practical because it will support both this millimeter wave super fast core urban type of 5g as well as long range nationwide 5g that will be you know give you coverage anywhere you go so if you're looking for a 5g hotspot you definitely didn't want the older generation of stuff because it was orphaned from day one this new generation of hotspots is gonna last a while it's gonna work everywhere you go once the networks roll out so let's talk about what, what's, what's been announced. Um, first off, the product names. They're, they, these things are a little bit of a mouthful. On the Verizon front, we've got the Verizon Insego MiFi M2100 5G UW. UW is ultra wideband. And on the AT&T front, we have it from um, your Nighthawk 5G Mobile Hotspot Pro. Mouthful there as well. Um, and they are both evolutions of the current hotspots from each of these car carriers and manufacturers. So on the Verizon front, the um, M2100 is actually very similar to the uh, Inseco 8800 here. This is, we haven't gotten our M2100 in yet. Um, similar size pucks, similar, almost exactly the same user interface. Um, there's a few key differences though. The new uh, M2100, does not have antenna ports that we loved about the old 8800. Um, and, you know, a little bit of a downside there. On the AT&T front, we'll just give you a quick little thing. The, the new Nighthawk 5G Pro is very similar to this is the old Nighthawk. And it actually keeps the antenna ports. We've confirmed with Netgear that the antenna ports are there, stay there and still functional and will work for 5G, but not for a millimeter wave of 5G. And it has an Ethernet port, which is a really nice feature. But now, other than these ports and stuff on the side, the internals of both of these devices are very similar. So we're going to talk about those right now. So what makes these next generation hotspots next generation? Um, in addition to the 5G cellular, the, uh, one of the other ways that they're evolving is they are both support Wi-Fi 6, which is the next evolution of Wi-Fi technology. Um, Wi-Fi 6... It's a big difference over Wi-Fi 5, which is what's in most devices now. Wi-Fi 5, the standard is 802.11ac. Wi-Fi 6 is 802.11ax. These both broadcast on the same 2.4 and 5 gigahertz of Wi-Fi frequencies, but 802.11ax, or Wi-Fi 6, can make more efficient use of the airwaves, particularly when there's a lot of devices and a lot of local network Wi-Fi congestion. So. These new Wi-Fi 6 devices theoretically can have up to four times as much local network throughput. Not that you'll ever actually see that, but better local Wi-Fi is the important thing to think about. The Verizon version can connect 30 different devices over Wi-Fi. The AT&T version, I think they announced it a week later and they uh, decided to up the number to 32 just for a little bit of bragging rights. That's the Wi-Fi front. Then on the cellular front, they're evolved to 5G. Now these devices support bands, both support bands um, N2, N5, and N66 as um, the low band 5G that they support. 
Um, these are the uh, 5G equivalents of the LTE bands 2, 5, and 66. These are um, going to be layered on top of the carrier's existing 4G networks. So the low-pan 5G is not going to be transformatively different than 4G, so this is going to be a concern. And then they support the millimeter wave bands of 260 um, and potentially even 261. So the, the high bands that these carriers are rolling out at the super, super high frequencies, but the millimeter wave networks are super short range. Probably won't even, the signal won't even pass through a window or a wall. So these aren't going to be super practical unless you happen to be in a park in an urban downtown where millimeter wave has been deployed, in which case you might get two gigabits per second off your hotspot. In most of the rest of the places, you'll be down, you might still get real 5G, but you'll be using these lower bands that will be just the equivalent of really good 4G. Is that really going to be worth investing in for the future? Maybe. Now, one area of concern with these hotspots, though, is they don't officially support any of the mid-band 5G. And these are the, the, the bands that are in the, the, basically the 3 gigahertz range that are um, have a lot of the coverage advantages of low band and a lot of the speed advantages of millimeter wave. Not crazy super fast, but also not crazy super limited in range. Um, Mid-band 5G is going to be extremely important in the future evolution of 5G networks. Um, T-Mobile already has their mid-band network out, AT&T and Verizon do not. But there's a lot of concern that these might not be possible to com be compatible with the mid-band networks that these carriers are going to be rolling out in the years ahead. So do you want to invest in a super fancy, um, expensive, brand new hotspot that a year or two or three might no longer be um, able to connect to the most important 5G bands in the country? That is an important consideration to keep in mind whether you're considering these. On the other hand, these are, if you're looking for a, a 4G hotspot and the 5G is just a nice bonus for you, both of these have just about as advanced 4G modems as you can get. There's a LTE Category 22 with all the bands supported. So if you're on either Verizon or AT&T, these will be about as good as you can get as far as 4G hotspots, even if the 5G is just a kind of a nice bonus. Now, then the price. Is this going to be worth it to invest in these? On the AT&T front, their new Nighthawk Pro, they're asking $509.99, a kind of a bizarre price point to pick for the new Nighthawk Pro hotspot, which is twice what the old 4G Nighthawk costs. And then on the Verizon front, the M2100 is $399, twice what the 8800 costs. So is it worth paying twice as much for a somewhat more advanced 4G device that has 5G that will be good but potentially not great in the years to come as the next generation of these come out and are even better. There's definitely a lot of trade-offs and you've got to really consider before you jump into this, are there data plans that make this worthwhile? And for that, Cherie is going to explain, well, <laughs> you'll see. All right, none of this technology matters if you don't have a suitable data plan to use with these devices and that seems to be what's going to be lacking for now. Now, first question is going to, you're going to ask is probably if you have a sweet legacy unlimited data plan from AT&T or Verizon, like the prepaid unlimited jackpack plan, an old grandfather legacy Verizon plan, a grandfathered in AT&T unlimited plus or mobile plan. At present time, neither of the carriers is including 5G access with those plans. However, there is a possibility that those SIM cards may work on the 4G modem that is inside of these new devices. So that is to be seen. But what about new data plans that the carriers are offering with these devices? Let's start with Verizon. On their M2100 or any of their 5G devices, they have 5G ultra wideband plans out because that is the only coverage that Verizon currently has. They have not deployed their nationwide 5G network yet. That should be coming up later this year. You have two choices of data plans with their 5G hotspot. One is an a la carte unlimited data plan for $90 per month, specifically for data only devices. On that plan, you get 50 gigabytes of unlimited full speed data net, uh, access on their ultra wideband, that is only their millimeter wave coverage in those core urban areas of a few cities. And then after you reach that 50 gigabytes of usage, you are then subject to network management if the network is congested, but they are promising that you will get at least three megabit per second speeds, which is very usable on most networks. So that one is a slightly unlimited data plan. 
But if you are not in one of those ultra wideband areas, you are using the 4G network and that has the typical 15 gigabyte high speed mobile hotspot cap that we are all now used to as not being unlimited. You are then throttled down to 600 kilobits per second. There's also the option to add on the M2100 to one of their unlimited smartphone plans. You can do that for $30 per month, or if you have the higher end ones, you get half off of that for $15 per month. On that one, however, you still get the 50 gigabytes of high speed 5G ultra wideband access, but after you reach that cap, you are hard throttled down to 600, 600 kilobit per second. So that is a major difference from doing the a la carte. So if you are actually in one of the ultra wideband areas, that a la carte unlimited plan may make better sense for you. Hopefully, once their nationwide uh, network is deployed, they might have new data plans and they will clarify if the current uh, 50 gigabytes of usage is going to include that nationwide access or not. They are being very clear that it is only for ultra wideband. Okay, AT&T. They are launching along with the new Netgear Nighthawk 5G Pro, new data plans to go along with them. Not very attractive ones. They have Data Connect for both consumer and for business plans. It is a 15 gigabyte plan for $60 per month or a 35 gigabyte plan for $85 per month. And you do get a $10 discount if you set up auto pay. Now, if you're on a 5G network, you're going to be burning through your data very quickly. And worse than these data caps, they've brought back overage charges at $10 per two gigabytes, which are automatically charged if you go over those data caps. So yay, you can rack up a huge bill very quickly with these new data plans. Now for business, they actually have some other options. They have their wireless broadband plan, which they have really started to tighten down on the clarifications on that, that that is meant for machine to machine use only. So like a payroll system or a cash register, not for actual consumer use and video and other things are actually th uh, not allowed on these plans, but those are unlimited plans starting at $80 per month, all the way up to $200 per month, depending upon the speed cap that you want on those plans. But those plans are eligible with these new 5G hotspots. They also have new Business Connect plans. Now, these are authorized for general use. So you can stream video on them. You can do all your normal stuff that you would do as a human with data. Now get the pricing on this. The 10 gigabyte plan is starting at $80 per month. The highest plan you can get is a 200 gigabyte plan for the low, low price of $950 per month. Yes, you heard me right. $950 per month for 200 gigabytes of data, which at 5G speeds may last you an hour. Great. They also have mobile share plans. Those go up to 10 gigabytes of usage for $75 per month. Again, not really usable amounts of data for those of us looking for a home internet replacement or office replacement on the road. So that's what's out there. Uh, Cricket Wireless, which is AT&T's prepaid subsidiary, has announced that they're simply data plans, which has 100 gigabytes for $90 per month, are going to include 5G access. However, initially, Netgear and AT&T have an exclusive arrangement with the new Netgear 5G hotspot, so you're unlikely to be able to acquire one unless you activate an AT&T data plan and then move it over to Cricut. That, that remains to be seen if even those devices will be eligible in Cricut's plans. So that's what's up with 5G right now. Hopefully things get better on the data front in the future. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.